Hey there, hi there, ho there. It's me, Bear, the Gen X GM, and I am here today to talk to you about Eroic. Eroic. Uh, specifically, I'm here to talk about why I've chosen to use cards over dice uh, for my uh, heroic superhero game, which is also going to eventually lead to a fantasy game. Sorry, let me make sure that's a little closer to my face. <clears throat> so, let's break into it. And get her done. So these are the cards. These are not final designs. And you know what? Let me take my face out of there. So that way we can just focus on the cards. These are the ideas that I've had. So basically there's going to be uh, four groupings, uh, attributes uh, to each. And they're called edges. And they'll be uh, a body edge, a reflex edge. So the body edge is going to be red. Reflex edge will be yellow. Uh, mind edge will be blue and spirit edge will be green now you should recognize these as the primary colors of red blue green or red golden green uh, these are the colors used in comic books a lot hence why I'm going with them on top of that we're gonna have another suit which is called the karma suit and I've actually redesigned that card and I didn't put up the new redesign so I'm gonna break down each card individually after and I'll show you that in a second and then we've got basically the hero card and the villain card of which there will be a grand total of four in the deck the deck is 108 cards and that's the backing of the card okay so that's the main thrust of it now we're gonna get into cards individually and we might as well go ahead and I'll start with the new uh, karma card that I was discussing with you. Just give me a second here, please, while I rearrange. I got three screens. It always gets a little messy. So let's take a look at the uh, the uh, karma card. You'll notice I changed the karma symbol here uh, to make it a little less busy and to match up with the others. Now, the reason I've included a, car a card suit symbol is because I want uh, people who have issues with color, color blindness, to be able to look at the cards and recognize it by symbol. Now, most people without that issue are just going to be able to go by color and they'll be on their way. But that's what we need to do. At the top of the card, we have an event and an er, 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 I shouldn't say an event. We have a calling, uh, and this is in this case, it's fallen angels. So, in the game, there are callings, and everybody has one. There's some heroic callings, some villainous callings, and some neutral or unaligned callings. Uh, this one is Fallen Angel, which is, tends to be uh, either a, a villainous or neutral one. But here's the thing. Even though we call them villainous, neutral, and what have you, there is an ability with good role-playing to have any calling be available to any character to play when they make their character. So that means basically the, the GM can use, uh, the narrator uh, can use this calling against, use the card to compel for currency, in-game currency of hero points, to compel um, characters with that calling to have a bigger reaction or to invest themselves more in the event that's going on. We have the value over card of the card here, which is 10, which means when you play this card, you add 10 to your total for the result. We have a condition uh, here, which is neutral and condition, uh, sorry, is negative. Conditions can be positive, negative, or neutral, and they're used to determine initiative healing, difficulty, uh, durations, things like that. They're very useful. Over here we have a location, which in this case is a space station. Over here we have an event, which is a power surge. We have an NPC available for you here. In this case we have the guardsman. We repeat the suit symbol and the value and the condition at the bottom of the card. And then we have what here is called, we call a whimsy effect. Ignore all damage from one attack against you. Again, the currency will come into play where you can use your currency to activate uh, the whimsy event. I'm not, a, this is the weakest link right now because I'm figuring out how to work it. I'm not sure if they'll have values or I don't know how it's going to work right now. So right now it's just there, but it may change in its uh, execution as the care as the as the system uh evolves now to continue showing you so this is again this is the karma um suit so there's the four primary suits like we said there's um body mind reflex and spirit right or body reflex mind and spirit however you want to label them those will explain gameplay later but when you play a karma card it goes into a specific pool that the gm then or the narrator then gets to use against you because like the symbol implies karma comes around everything comes back on itself so when you might want to play that karma card for the big numbers or just because you have it or whatever the case may be 
don't forget that card will be coming back at you at some point in the future because karma is cyclical. So if we come over here, we can take a look at the idealist uh, card. This is an intellect or a mind card. We see that the calling at the top is the idealist. It's taking place in a city harbor. We use diamond as the symbol. Its value is eight. It has a positive condition. The event is an oil spill. The NPC we offer is aqua. And here we have plus one intellect edge for intuition feats. Now this is an example. This is an example of uh, what I do with the whimsy. I just copied a bunch of stuff from old different games that I had made whimsy cards for and put here. So this is why I need to really sort of inv invest in the effect uh, to make sure that everything is uh, much, 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 much better. So let's bounce over here to the might card. We have a nine, a nine, a negative aura. The calling is destroyer. This is the symbol, the upside down pentagon. I guess it's just a pentagon. It takes place in a city square. Rampage is the event. Skull Smasher is the NPC. Repeat at the bottom. And plus one might edge for damage. So again, we have sort of a whole thing. And like I keep saying, and I will keep saying, I got to work on these. Uh, next up, we'll look at a reflex card. I don't, I'm not super happy with that number font, so I might change it. But we've got a four negative condition. Zealot is the calling. We've got a hexagon as the symbol. It's at a foreign embassy. There's a hostage crisis. Sam Hain or Sawin uh, or Sawin um, and everything at the bottom. And again, we have a whole thing there. So that's sort of how that's going. And then if we look at the spirit, we have a two. This is our first look at a neutral aura, which is a circle. We have a triangle or a uh, yeah pyramid or whatever you want to call that for the symbol. The calling is loose cannon. The area is a dormitory. The event is a kidnapping. The character we show is damselfly. And again, we have a whimsy effect, which I really do have to perfect. Now, here is a villain card. Um, there are only going to be two villain cards in the decks. They have a value of 10. And the thing about the villain card and the hero card is they auto-trump. And trump means that if the card played, the last card played on your action is the suit of the action. So mind, re uh, body, reflex, mind, spirit. It trumps, meaning that you draw the top card off the deck and add it to your total. If that is the same suit, it continues until you draw a card that isn't the suit. Well, these cards... The villain, and I'll show you the hero card next, they auto-trump, which means you play it for 10, and then you trump to the next card, whatever it is, and if it's of the suit of the action, you continue. That's why there's only four. They're really special to get. But in this case, you'll notice it's a calling for all villains. We use a lightning bolt or a thunderbolt for the symbol right there. Uh, negative condition. Crisis in reality is the event, alternate earth is the location, the bug is a character, and draw an all-new hand of cards. So discard your cards and draw the cards if you use the whimsy effect. And if we go back, we will get to the heroic version where we have it's worth 10, it's a positive or a condition, we have a star for the symbol, it's all heroes for the callings. Uh, the tide turns as the event, it's on an alien battlefield, we've got Lady America, Right there, well, right there. And we've got all allies, or allies discard uh, up to their hand and redraw, meaning they can discard as many cards as one or all of their hand size and have that uh, redrawn from the deck. So that's sort of what's going on, and that's how the card evolution is coming along. Uh, the reason why it's going to be... Um, 108 cards is because one of the things I was doing while I was working on what we'll call Fantasy Saga, which is basically uh, a fantasy hack of all this, I wanted to make sure that anyone with playing cards they can get at their local dollar store can play the game. So basically body is represented by hearts, reflex by clubs, mind by diamonds, and spirit by spades. Now, these are not the final things. This was an early draft. It's changed since then. Uh, but the way that you could use the um, cards was as follows. Jacks, queens, kings, and aces, which I don't have listed here like an idiot. Did I update this? Yes, I did. Hang on. Sorry. Uh, that's an old document. Let me go to the update. There we go. So, using poker cards. Hearts represents body, diamonds represents mind, clubs represents reflex, spades represents spirit, and all aces and face cards equal the karma suit. 
The decks are as follows. Ace is equal one. There are eight cards in the deck because you're using two decks of 52. Jacks equal three. There are eight of those in the deck. Queens equal five. There are eight of those in the deck. And kings equal 10. There are eight of those in the deck. So that gives us our karma suit of having 32. 16 and 16 is 32, I believe. Am I right on that? 8 and 8 is 16. 16 and 6 is 12. Carry the 1 over. Yeah, 32. So there'll be 32 um, fate cards. You'll then have 72 cards uh, in the deck that range from 2 to 10, broken down into 4 suits. So there'll be 4 of each. There'll be, f um, sorry, there'll be 8 of each. There'll be 8 twos, 8 threes, 8 fours, 8 fives, and la la la. Joker is the wild cards. There are four of them. You're going to have to earmark them. Usually most decks have a color and a black and white Joker, but if yours doesn't, you'll have to earmark it. Which one is hero, which one is villain, two hero, two villain, giving us a total value of 108. Now I said wild cards have no value, but that's not true. Uh, wild cards, uh, I'm just going to do this. Boop. Count as trump. When the trump card is played, da 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 Auras. For the purposes of our cards, using playing cards. This won't be the same for the actual deck that is created because it would be a little punitive. All hearts and diamonds are neutral. Spades are positive. Clubs are negative. This counts for all cards, including face cards. Jokers are neutral. That's not true. The jokers are positive or negative hero villain. There we go. Uh, now, this puts an abundance of neutral cards in the deck, but I'm okay with that. So we just added ourselves uh, two there, and we just added ourselves two there. So we can take out the non-aligned line, and that gives us... I think I made a mistake, because <laughs> you guys know me in math. Yeah, so if we put two there, that's going to give us... Hang on a second, I'm going to redo that there we go if I put two there that's gonna give us 28 yeah, and if I put two there that's gonna give us 31 now let's see what I'm doing wrong shall we uh, 52 plus 28 plus 31 111 so I'm making a mistake in my math somewhere I'm an idiot don't mind me well let's this is always the fun part of these videos I know is watching me do math so let's do all that thing so if all spades are positive, I'm not going to bother now. Anyway, we're going to have more neutral alignments than we're going to have negative or positive. Uh, let's just go back to where that is. That's really weird. Does that add up? Did I add it up properly originally? 52 plus 26 plus 29 plus 4. No, I did not do that properly. I screwed up somewhere. I'll figure out my math later. Uh, let's just go ahead and put that as X and put that as X and put that as X and get rid of that. Pretty simple. Uh, yeah, anyway, back to my whole thing. So that's basically the thing. It's all a work in progress. I apologize for digressing into that whole thing. Now, why am I using cards? So you've seen what the card is and you've heard me say this before. Having cards in your hand lets you have a tactical narrative thought process in how you're going to play the game. Versus dice, which is just a random thing, and it's it's all up to chaos at that point in time. I prefer watching players be able to make decisions based upon rational tactical choices they have available to them as opposed to great plans that fall apart because the dice just don't cooperate yes i get the excitement of that chaos yes i understand there are people who love that sort of thing and god bless them for loving it but for me i would much rather see players control their experience and react to the chaos that I as the GM or narrator introduce to the scenario forcing them to think this combines two things in my mind and you can feel free to disagree this combines a little bit of the old school mentality of the answer isn't always on your character sheet notice I use the term isn't always on your character sheet and the new school mentality of sometimes the answer is on your character sheet so basically by mixing those two things together, you have a better play experience. Old school players get to show how crafty they are. New school players get to show how good their builds are. 
And all in all, it comes down to how much fun everyone can have at the table. And that should be the key. So there's going to be more to come on that. Um, I'm slowly developing this. Like I said, it's not going to be released until it's ready. So don't get too excited because it's going to take a while. I'm going to have to make uh, no art cards for playtest because I just don't have the art available. I don't have 108 pieces of art in distinct character art to use. I have a lot, but I don't think I have that much. Um, no, I, I can find out. Um, so for now, you're going to have to just be patient with us and let me get to where I need to get. But when playtest is ready, I will be announcing it here. All right, there you go. Those are my thoughts. Feel free to comment down below. Feel free to discuss. As always, join the Patreon if you can. Head on over to the Discord and join us over there. We talk about a lot of crazy stuff. Sometimes we watch movies together. It's even fun. Uh, I know, crazy. Discord, fun. Who knew? Uh, and, you know, you can pick up some product from any of the links down below. And otherwise, I will be back with more videos later. So, peace, love, geek, and as always when we talk about this.